squirrel goes cheep, cheep, cheep. The danger probably passed a long time ago, but it can't stop. A lot of our minds are like that. Something happens and we keep coming again and again and again, and it fades away, and then we dig it up again, and it fades away and dig it up again. This is one of the things we're trying to cure as we meditate. It may take time, because it's an old, old habit. But try to replace the stupid conversations we have in the mind with some more intelligent ones. People read about the factors of jhana. They say, gee, how do I do a directed thought? How do I do evaluation? We well, are doing them all the time already. As the Buddha said, this is how we speak. We first direct our thoughts to something, and then we evaluate it in the mind, and then we open our mouths and speak. It's this internal conversation that just keeps going on and on and on. And what we're trying to do as we meditate is to get a better story, get a better conversation going. So talk to yourself about the breath. Talk to yourself about the mind trying to stay in the present moment. And if it's having trouble, what's the problem? There's a problem with the breath, there's a problem with the mind. There's a problem with what you've been doing as you go through the day. This is where you have to think about the principle of restraint of the senses. Because if you keep on taking in, taking in, taking in garbage all day long, then there's a lot of cleaning out you have to do when you sit down and meditate. It's best not to take it in to begin with. So evaluate your meditation, evaluate your life as it affects your meditation. That kind of inner conversation is useful. It actually goes someplace, it goes someplace good. Even though you're talking to yourself, it aims at getting the mind to finally be still. You look at John Lee's instructions for meditation, especially in his books prior to keeping the breath in mind. And a lot of it is, to begin with, is talking to yourself. Thinking about the body in terms of its 32 parts, thinking about the elements, thinking about inconstancy, stress, not self. In other words, thinking about things to give rise to a sense of sangwega. So when the mind finally does settle down with the breath, any thoughts that come in that would pull you back to the world, you can remind yourself what I want out of the world, because it's got all these drawbacks. Whereas the way out lies here with the breath. So learn how to think in a new way, think in better ways, before you put your thoughts down. Because good thoughts are a lot easier to let go of without any sense of aversion or anger or frustration. You've converted them to a form where they can let them go. You can let them go peacefully, and the mind can finally settle down.